We're going to go into StatCrunch, so go to StatCrunch.com anytime you want to do something that involves the program. So there's your spreadsheet, rows and columns, just like a typical Excel spreadsheet, right? Now, you can do a lot of things with the StatCrunch program. You can uh, import data, you can copy and paste data, and dump it right into the spreadsheet. The most, most of the time, what you're going to be doing with the StatCrunch program is using it to answer homework questions. All right, so what I'm going to do right now is help you solve a homework problem from section 2.1 using StatCrunch. Okay, so here is a typical uh, type, stat, uh, type problem. A national survey asked people how often do you eat out for dinner instead of at home. The frequencies were as follows, never, rarely, sometimes, most of the time, always. Now the neat thing is that before we would have to enter this data manually in the stat crunch. Now, see this little icon right here? That little icon tells me that I can enter the data, copy the data, and enter it right into StatCrunch. So if I click this, open in StatCrunch, and boom, it just drops right into the program. Nice. And so now I can do all the things that I need StatCrunch to do. So if I want to go to Graphics and select Bar Plot, you can either have raw data or summary data. This happens to be summary data because it's telling us how many of each category already exist. If it lists raw data, would be it would list never, 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 rarely, sometimes, most of the time, down in a row, and you'd, then you'd have raw data. So I have summary data. The categories are in the response column. The counts are in the frequency column. And now I can click Next. And it gives me a few options. Type, either frequency or relative frequency, bar, bar plot. Other if percent is less than. So sometimes with data you end up with uh, answers that don't have a lot of categories in them. You can go ahead and, and say if it's less than 3%, combine them into an other category. You could put the values in ascending order, descending order, however you want. Display values above the bars if possible. I like this as an option because then it gives you a frequency and relative frequency table, sort of, but in graphical form. Follow? Click Next. Uh, in a good graph, you're always going to label your axes. So my horizontal axis is response. I think I asked for a frequency, didn't I? So my vertical axis is frequency, and then my title would be how often do you go out to dinner or something along those lines. How often do? Click next and then just click create graph and boom there is my bar graph. Under options you could copy this and then paste it into a Word document or some other document if you wanted to. You could save this to my computer or to StatCrunch.com. To StatCrunch.com. That might come in handy. If you say save into StatCrunch.com, each one of you have your own My Results folder in StatCrunch. And then you can save the bar plot, give it a name that describes what it actually is, and if you wanted to share it with folks, you could, which is kind of nice. Now the other thing under options is that you can edit the bar graph. Now editing is nice because let's say now, instead of a frequency, I want a relative frequency bar graph. I can do that, and now all I need to do is change my vertical axis to relative frequency, hit create graph and I have my relative frequency 
bar graph, and I have the relative frequencies above the bar. So if you remember this problem right here asked to create a relative frequency, right? And so now you know under never put in 0 0.182. See it? Or under rarely, what are you going to put? Yeah, 0 0.136, right? And so on. And boom, you have your relative frequency distribution, and ultimately you're going to have your bar graph. Follow? Now another thing that I could do besides creating the the bar graph is I could also create a pie chart very easily. Again, I have summary data. Categories are in the response. Response are in the free oops, categories are in response. Counts are in frequency. I can display either the percent of the total or a count or both or neither. Title, again, how often do you go out to eat? Create graph. Now you have your pie chart. Real simple, right? A lot easier than doing this stuff by hand. <clears throat> One of the things that I have in StatCrunch, and this data is available to you, is a, a last semester, at the beginning of the semester, I created a survey. So you see that the, the uh, Indy cars here going around the track? I created a survey where I asked not only the students in the class, but via Facebook and Twitter, people all around the country to respond to a survey. And I got a bunch of responses to that survey based on the different questions that I asked. And so you'll be able to uh, play around with this data set anytime that you want. So one of the questions that I asked was, so I asked things like, uh, what was your, what's your gender, birth month, do you uh, text while driving? All right, so here's it, they're mostly girls. So here's an interesting thing that I could ask. Am I getting more yeses for females than males? for texting while driving. Check out what I could do. Graphics, bar plot. Now it's with raw data, right? And I wanna do a box, a bar plot of do you text while driving, right? Now under group by, what I'm gonna do is group by gender so that you can see if there's a difference. And I'm going to do split bars. You could also stack them. Uh, remember we said when we do comparisons, we want to do relative frequency, right? And we'll display the values above the bar. So x-axis is uh, text, right? Do you text relative frequency? And do you text while driving. I'll create my graph now and there's a side-by-side -side bar plot for uh, texting while driving and there's no difference between males and females turns out.